Hi folks, welcome to today's Coffee and Colossians. It's Friday and we are continuing in chapter 4 where there's this request for being devoted to prayer, being watchful and thankful, praying that God would open a door for the message. We looked at that yesterday. And in this, in verse 4, pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Now, this is the mystery of Christ. Now, this mystery is what Paul has been talking about in the whole letter. So when you go back into chapter 1, he talks about that he had become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in all its fullness. The mystery that's been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. So this is a mystery that's now disclosed. And he goes on to talk about it being the glorious riches of Christ uh, coming out. So the Lord's people bring it to the Gentiles. So he, here is the absolute essence of evangelism and of the Christian message. That Christ is, is a mystery, but not a mystery to be hidden, but a mystery to be revealed. That there is, is good news to tell people. It's like there's a package and we're taking the package off. And you see uh, the, the treasure that's inside the package. I mean, I've been uh, reading this book here, uh, Vance Christie's David Livingston. Um, and I, I, I find it really thrilling. But not least, much more than I realize that Livingston saw himself as bringing the mystery of Christ to the Africans. Well, that's what we're doing. I mentioned yesterday about going to Newcastle. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. And I think, you know, every gospel preacher has got to ask for that, has got to ask for things to be proclaimed clearly. A lot of preaching I listen to, to me it seems quite confused and it seems unclear. It's done in cliches and memes. But how do we present Christ, the mystery of Christ, clearly to people who don't know who he is? It's one of the reasons I wrote Magnificent Obsession. I, I think about this all the time, thinking about how we communicate so that people will see something of the beauty of Christ. In the old uh, Brethren pulpit, sometimes I would go and you would see in the pulpit there would just be this verse, Sir, we would see Jesus. Well, we really, you, wh why we need to pray is because we need to ask the Holy Spirit to open the eyes and the hearts and the minds of the people we speak to. But we also need to pray that those who are preachers would be given a clarity and a freedom of expression and an, a pathos and a passion that communicates who Jesus is. How can they believe unless someone tells them? How can they tell? How can they preach them unless they are sent? So that is what we are to pray for, that Christ would be clearly revealed. Second Thessalonians 3.1 says this, Finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honoured just as it was with you. I can't think of a better request for prayer than I have for you than that. Um, pray for me this weekend as I go up to Charleston to, in Newcastle, Charlestown in Newcastle to uh, proclaim God's word there and in a place called Swansea. Um, and may I proclaim the mystery of Christ clearly as I should. God bless you. Bye.